Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, waking up for a very early uh, Sunday. Yes, hey, happy Sunday. Hope you're having the best Sunday possible out there in cryptocurrency land. As you can see, I am just waking up, so excuse me if I do make a few mistakes with my good old English over here. It's my only language, but I'm not very good at it. Anyways, as always, we you the best of the best as we get in a live scene right over here. And Bitcoin actually had a little bit of a rally in the early morning hours, or perhaps uh, later morning hours, if you're over there in the Western Hemisphere of this world. Anyways, stopping the day out and uh, not necessarily not necessarily clearing the critical 21 exponential moving average right over here 3714 was the area to beat did not take out that area now of course the daily is not the most important chart to me right now it's the two day but while we're here let's just go take a look at it and let's go down and put on the 10 simple and see where Bitcoin's coming in on that yes it is it has actually closed above this guy right over here so technically speaking a lot of the time when if and when Bitcoin is gonna make a move like this it'll pop back down and retest that 10 simple somewhere in this range around 3650 that's the next if you are bullish area that you'd want to see hold to put it lightly uh let's see what we have on the uh on the uh, on the oscillators right over here uh daily stokes still still crawling their way up but as you can see they actually are losing momentum even with yesterday's move they don't don't look too damn healthy down around there uh uh daily uh, rsi right over here just getting out of the bearish control zone not bad um daily adx dmx uh not giving you a shit over here in fact the adx is giving you an like lesson to the trend even with that rally yesterday so again this is the deceiving thing that i think a lot of people get when you see a nice two or about 150 dollar dildo on uh, on an exchange like GDAX, it feels, you know, it feels powerful. It feels crazy, especially after, you know, what was it like a week, week and a half of consolidation in this range right over here. Well, to put in perspective, this is, you know, we're uh, really what it looks like so far is more of the same. Looking at the volume characters of this whole move together, again, that very, 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 very orderly drop off in volume, corrective by nature. So let's go down to low time frames and actually dissect this out. And let's go down over here, perhaps a four hour. I believe yesterday we were looking at this guy right over here and we said, hey, symmetrical triangle if you do break it out to the upside well where's this thing likely to find it's uh it's it's uh it's stop and place at well right around here and there you go uh this actually worked out a little bit better on bitmexco i'm using gdax right now but just to go over to bitmexco and uh verify this it actually hit the measure move one to one off this area anyways i don't want to give i don't want to give too much away by looking at that right now but as you can see popping all the way up and uh and, and basically you can you can call that a test of the 200 exponential on the uh, four hour double chart if we put back on the 200 simple that should be coming in as well and i believe it's governing price yes indeed it is and actually the 200 simple got it perfectly right over there so i do like that now overall because you can see that this that that the breakout of this symmetrical triangle right over here was you know i mean i mean it was a move outside of the triangle definitely did close outside of it and is you know a breakout of that pattern 100% do not get me wrong and that was something to be traded in fact to verify myself right over here I did trade that just doing exactly what I said I would I bought at 36 uh, 33 um, 110,000 uh, uh, contracts worth of Bitcoin and then I sold uh, it as it went higher <laughs> basically um, so that's kind of what I'm doing right uh, and now I'm just managing this position right now which I don't want to hold this long for long and the reason for that is is because with this breakout right over here look at the volume on it the volume is once again falling off so what does that tell us well it tells us this is just going to morph into another consolidation remember when a breakout fails to have that crazy you know spike in volume and what when the spike in volume that I'm really looking for is like the spike in volume that it took to get it down into this area well then typically speaking you just get you just get i don't want to call it a failed breakout but you get another piece of the puzzle of consolidation essentially so what are we working on right now well you're not going to like this but look away look away if you are bullish um basically a rising channel uh or rising wedge whatever the fuck you want to call it. i don't like wedges typically speaking um but this does have the right characteristics of one and typically speaking these ones are resolved to the downside now more importantly i don't necessarily care all that much for patterns channels i do like uh wedges i do not uh and you could you can make the argument that this is really just a rise or a rising channel bear flag um but overall we do have a very obvious support trend or sorry uh horizontal resistance trend line going in right over here at around 3680 ish area now of course on the first way up got taken out now the big test is to see if this area is going to hold or not so 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 
if you're on the four hour doodle chart right over here and if this area breaks 3680 ish area with a uh let's call it like an hourly or two hour doodle close below there then yes very 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 likely that it comes all the way back down here for the full retrace well not the full retrace but all the way back down here to the lower end of this um uh, of this consolidation period again the volume characters of this are not they are not conclusive of a big move either which way and more importantly and what i put a lot more weight on is the ex is is my moving average the exponentials especially and to me this is a rejection of them right over here in fact so not only that but the other the other kind of scenario that we were looking at on uh sorry yesterday was this guy right over here putting on a fib and going from top to bottom you can see very easily that actually finally now bitcoin has tagged the 382 uh, and I really like that. That's exactly what I was talking about yesterday on looking for something. Now, I did not really, as, as you saw when I showed my positions over there, I didn't really take up a, a short position right over here. I basically just let go of the long that I bought down around 3630 ish area. Um, but that's because I'm in no hurry, hurry right now. And a lot of people have been asking me about this. Like, are you shorting this area? Are you doing this? I mean, technically, yes, I did in a way, but what, but I, but really, I'm looking to put on a real position, not you know, not a fucking scout position, okay? To to really make it, uh, make it abundantly clear, um, and this is kind of what I was looking for because remember, one of the things that bothered me about this whole area right over here, especially if it was to like just fall down right over here, like I think most people thought it was going to. Um, well, it did. It didn't look. It didn't. It's something that doesn't happen all that often when it comes to like bots and algorithms and looking at, you know, fibs because a lot of them are just programmed to go off of that, especially the less sophisticated ones in cryptocurrency land. But basically, you have this fib. You have this fib retracement going all the way from the bottom of this area to the top of this area, and this first down right over here tagged was basically a front one of the six. The front run of the six one eight is kind of how I how I consider it. And typically, when the bots pick it up there, which is very, 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 very common, that's why it's called the gold in pocket they'll they'll target the 236 on the first pass then if it comes back down again and we picked up the 618 once again which was actually overshot by just a little bit but that's that's fine typically when it gets picked back up there again uh the 382 will be the uh will, will be the target and so yesterday i was saying you know I, like yeah it did hit the 0.5 right over here but i our bots are they really going to be that aggressive right now? I don't think it's I don't think that they're going to be that aggressive right now, especially when the overall malaise of this bitch is uh, is consolidation. Now the bigger formation, the bigger the bigger symmetrical triangle inside of the other triangle is still is still very much valid as well. So to put this in perspective, as long as we are below the breakdown point of thirty eight fifty right over here. Uh, uh, this symmetrical triangle right over here is still in play, and that actually has been resolved to the downside volume confirmation and price action confirmation both. So again, as long as we are below 38.50, I am running with this, or or, th or this is kind of like my first look as um, as as a target to the downside. Uh, that is very much in play again, as long as we are below 38.50. So I will be looking for a trade um, probably in the next day, day and a half, because it will be a holiday day. If I'm not getting redundant enough, tomorrow in America, MLK, he has the I have a dream, I have a Bitcoin speech, and, well, now you know the rest. The rest is history, baby. Uh, it's fucking Bitcoins we're being discriminated against. We'll have it no longer. That's right. Anyways, um... Yeah, so you know, yeah, I I got what I'm looking for, but my point is, is because there's a holiday coming up, it, I don't believe that there that we're gonna get a move until probably probably Monday or or if not Tuesday, um, likely because GBDC is gonna be closed. The futures will actually be open, I think, later tonight. I believe they will be open later tonight. Um, but remember, futures, and we'll get to them in just a second. They close at 3600 even, and GBDC probably, hopefully ideally is going to open up and fill the gap that we've been looking at for the last few days as well. So all these things starting to come together. That's what I really wanted to see. Now I'm feeling a lot better about this. And, uh, and overall, you know, I think Bitcoin's going to probably spend some time grinding this area in the meantime, that means today, tomorrow, uh, yeah, today and tomorrow. And then probably two, I'd imagine Tuesday is going to be the, going to be the day. And this is, you know, these are all making assumptions right now. I'm putting together a story, which is not a good thing to do in, in trading and technical analysis, not good to make assumptions, but putting together Together a case for a trade i will i will basically be very cool with taking this trade as long as we're really below 38.50 right over here but even but even close as long as we're closing uh four hour dildos below the 200 exponential moving average right over here that's how i'll be managed my risk for this trade again sharing what i'm doing not necessarily saying that that's the best trade for anyone else out there this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and also understand myself as a trader 
I have different perspectives compared to probably most people. I do this as a living, so I'm here most, you know, I'm here pretty much all day watching the charts and doing all that, all, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, people have different perspectives. You know, for some people, hodling and, and, and buying in and just like never looking at it is the best thing because their perspective on life is like I don't I don't have fucking time to do this and and I and I make more money focusing myself or or I have more joy in my life or whatever you know whatever your priority is uh in doing something else and, and dedicating that time to someone else for for myself not so much you know anyways um okay so let's actually throw in the volume profile over here I typically don't I I don't use I don't watch this all you know all that often but it is interesting to me right over here we did just basically stab right into this next kind of high value region uh, penis accretion point of control coming in down around 3620 right over here so again that would be the lower portion of this uh, uh, of this rising support again if you want to call this rising channel rising wedge what the fuck you want to call it technically both fine uh, maybe it makes a little bit more sense on a two hour mm. Not so much, actually, unless if you plot it like this, which is that the right way to be doing it? Well, nah, I, I think simplify right over here. We'll just do it like this. Something like that looks about right. Anyways, um, as long as that kind of uh, as long as that is in play, that's you know, essentially what I'll be going for. Uh, uh, sorry, measure move off this symmetrical triangle right over here, going all the way down to 3250-ish area. So this is certainly a trade that I think has, you know, de a decent amount of meat on it. Um, now here's the thing: What happens if Bitcoin actually takes out the 200 exponential moving average right over here? What if what happens if it both opens and closes, confirms a kill above that moving average? Well, then the next sort of scenario that I'd be looking for is basically just extending this descending uh, trend line down all the way, and this has been governing on our lower highs ever since we got into this very corrective consolidation for the last what was it like two yeah about two two and a half months. Um, so I'd be looking for somewhere around, you know, 3950, 4000 a share right over here. Uh, try another trade around there probably and probably even take a long off the breakage of the 200 exponential. But again, as long as we are essentially being governed by this uh, descending trend line, well, just another lower high, right? Doesn't mean that Bitcoin get, get, can't get above it, but that is kind of the signal for me to know, okay, are we doing something new? Have we done, done have we done something new? That would be that would be very cool. Um, but until that happens, well, I'm just going to go with the former trend because the former trend is your friend until the end of the trend. If if Bitcoin were to take out that area, you can see that the you know 4100 is the next big resistance above there. You got this guy right over here, which is right around what is it like 4350. So yeah, you know uh, there are certainly plenty of trades, uh, plenty of trades showing themselves right now, and that's what makes this game fun. Um, I mean, not to mention, I mean, just this horizontal that we're sitting on right now, 3680. You know what happens if that what happens if that breaks? You know like before. I even get a chance to get in this well take a trade off that again this is you know this is a game of risk reward not fucking soothsaying crystal ball type thinking uh, that can't be done anyways uh, four hour oscillators right over here again I don't put too much weight on these especially on a weekend um, which it is still weekend it's still it's it's early Sunday here so I don't believe Asia's woken up yet but uh, four hour stokes getting getting uh, crossing down um, what else do we have to look at? A uh, four hour RSI getting rejected from the bullish control zone, but not a, not a huge deal. Uh, four hour DMI ADX giving you absolutely nothing, telling you that this is a nothing, uh, a nothing move. And perhaps very important to me, actually the jewel. Now, if, if you, if, if you do have the jewel, if you do have access to the jewel, um, understand that this tool is actually way better at getting divergences than my other momentum oscillators uh, i don't know what it is but between this point here and this point right over here if we do actually i mean we already do kind of have this top right in there so is this going to be is this going to work out as divergence i would say i would say it definitely has the underpinnings of it but i'd really like another test back up to like 3750 ish area that would be beautiful somewhere right around this area give another stab to this give, give another stab to this uh this this trend line because you know a lot of people are going to be thinking the same thing right here right so it'd be great to just wash out all of the over leveraged over aggressive traders get some more longs in the building and uh and then play out whatever whatever moves going to be played out in fact we're actually kind of having the opposite right now to be fair 
Uh, shorts over here, shorts on Finex are at 31,000. Uh, uh, sorry, th this is longs on Finex. I apologize. Terrible slip of the tongue. 31,000 open longs. Um, but again, this is this is the this is the critical zone. Remember, so this horizontal right here, this this trend line that I have on there, it's not because you can make trend lines or anything on a shorts and longs chart. That can't be done. To be very very clear, but what I can say is that every time historically Bitcoin has gotten above this level on the open longs, then it's lined up with a major dump. This guy right over here. This guy. This guy. This guy. This this guy and perhaps this guy right over here you see that actually once it tries to get back into that level it actually it it, it, it immediately kind of backs away from that area um shorts over here same sort of a thing right same sort of a thing again do do i think that you can make trend lines on a short start fuck no you can't make divergences on, on short so you can't do like a rising channel you can't do like a fucking inverse head and shoulders it, that's silly it's a very misleading and it's wrong and it's and it's it's fuck it's fucking wrong and again i like to speak with the authority when saying these sorts of things because it's true. It's just misleading, and it's very naive of, of a lot of people that I see doing it. It's like, where do you get this idea? These are two very incomplete pieces of the whole of a fraction of the pie. It's it's like fractals within fra – like, this is like the only fractal that term that I use in cryptocurrencies. Um, anyways, uh, anytime that Bitcoin gets down to these amount of shorts on it, historically speaking, these critical lows, it matches up with major fucking dumps. So this was your dump of early August. This was your dump of you know 6,000, your break of 6,000, and we're getting kind of into this area once again. So it is on the radar. Let's go check out the, lo the, uh, the funny rate. Yeah, funny rate – oh, my God. Funny rate is huge on the longs right now. So we've been watching this for the last uh, – well, we've been watching this like forever, basically. But in the last week, you've seen it go from literally less than 0.01 to 0.02 yesterday, and then jumps up and more than triples uh, today to 0.07 percent. That is massive. That is massive because what does that mean? That means that people who are holding long positions, they will be uh, they will be essentially uh, paying on Finex. If 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 you're holding a million dollar a million dollar position essentially in dollar valuation, you're going to be paying you know I don't know five like five five thousand bucks a day just to hold your position. Probably uh, about that. There's some bad mental math, but somewhere around there, five 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 thousand to ten thousand, depending upon uh which rate you actually get because this is the average right so some people are paying more some people are paying less uh short rate over here on the other hand is literally fucking zero not point not not one percent that is nothing that is nothing uh four over four thousand of these shorts are hedges so really have nineteen thousand shorts so nineteen thousand open shorts versus thirty one thousand open longs not good either again that is one of the big reasons why i do not believe that the low is in we want to see those those, those metrics go opposite of each other we want to see everyone trying to short the rally out and again i do believe in bitcoin long term but i also do strongly believe that bitcoin will be hitting new lows um not anytime soon but at some point you know, a couple months, maybe. All right, so back now over here. Uh, let's go check out this guy right over here. And what else do we have to look at? Let's go to the higher time frames, the two day, the three day, and the weekly. Uh, two day right over here, two day. Um, as long as the two day dildo time frame is closing below 3680, which it will close later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, I am still looking at this as a bearish formation. Uh, two day Stokes still headed down, still gaining momentum down, even with that rally yesterday, even with that rally yesterday. Again, put in perspective, the volume on these sorts of things is the key. Uh, Two-day RSI actually getting getting above the exponential, but still in the bearish control zone. No, nothing really new there. Uh, DMI ADX finally turning down, which is exactly what you, which which makes a lot more sense to be honest. <laughs> makes a lot more sense. Uh, Three-day over here. Same sort of a thing, actually, but three-day Stokes, a fr almost a fresh cross down. They are hinting they will not. We, we don't get another tick until two days, um, so a lot of things can happen, of course. But unless if Bitcoin has a massive rally, this will look like this will be a cross down, and it will be. It will also look like a rejection of the neutral zone back to the bearish control zone. My my voice is starting to leave me. Um, and then also while we're here, let's go to the weekly. Weekly very important. As uh, weekly 200 exponential still governing prices, we did put in a nice bearish engulfing dildo on the weekly uh, last week, and this week is a consolidation area ish type dildo. Let's put on the 10 simple and see where this guy's coming in around. And there you go, the 10 simple governing that last high and then forcing it down. If we actually even had a test right up to the 10 simple, that'd be completely fine. So, again, the 10 simple is actually coming in at the top of that triangular resistance that we looked at uh, near the beginning of the stream video whatever cassette tape cassette <laughs> um but yeah anyways you know that's kind of what i'm what i'm what i'm looking at right over there so what else do we have to look at let's go look at like a 12 hour uh 12 hour oscillators uh 12 hour stokes getting you know getting into the bullish zone um 
but fine. Uh, DMI ADX giving you nothing. In fact, the, the ADX is going to suggest that we do have a trend beginning relatively soon. It doesn't stay down in this area for too long, historically speaking. Uh, so we will be getting to move relatively soon. Um, the question is, which way will it be? Now, now going off of the 12 hour, the 12 hour in, typically speaking, the 12 hour would be a buy for me. Whenever you take out the 21, pop back down and, and test it, I would, I, I just typically buy that. But uh, I, <laughs> I, looking at the other, looking at the other metrics, I'm less, I'm, I'm more hesitant. Uh, Ten-hour Stokes snaking around, giving you all sorts of signals. Again, this is consolidation, and that's exactly what we do when when we don't have like a full-on, like uh, obvious move. You know, when when you have a volume signature like this off of a move that looks to, that looks to just be more corrective in nature. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of put that one in the bag and say. Mm, it's it's non-conclusive it's non-conclusive and when you do look at this technically speaking it is in the formation of a bearish pattern more more often bearishly resolved pattern anyways um let's go check out uh cmes right over here cmes so so remember cmes closed at 3600 so they there will be a gap assuming that we did or assuming that we don't dump back down to 3600 by you know 6 p.m eastern time when they open if if that happens well then there's going to be a nice gap and that means that there's going to be like a magnetic force kind of pulling it down there not necessarily pulling it down there again these things don't need to be uh filled like immediately in fact most like they can take years in some cases in traditional markets cases um but uh but but my point is is that it would just be kind of like another thing saying okay be aware that if you are forming a bearish pattern and you are you know you do have these sort of uh, underlying market dynamics suggesting the same sort of a setup well that is that that is relevant that is certainly relevant uh not only that but again gbtc right over here and one of the reasons why why i kind of feel like like bitcoin probably doesn't turn down or, or break anything crazy until gbtc opens is because gbtc has a massive gap right over here if we could pop back up and tag that area which is basically where we are right now so if bitcoin can make another run at you know 3750 3800 in the next like day day and a half day two days whatever it is uh that would make a lot of sense for filling that and then probably turning down um, I mean, I mean, I mean, it could also be a case where you actually do just take that area out. I think it's less likely. Um, I, th I think it's less likely, but hey, I mean, it's possible. Uh, at least you'd know something right around there. I mean, if not, you know, maybe four dollars and twenty-six cents breaks first. But uh, overall, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Just looking at this guy right over here. Okay, I think that covers it up for Bitcoin. We'll get back to some more long-term analysis in Bitcoin um, after we cover Mr. Buterol, because Mr. Buterol has also been, uh, I think Mr. Buterol has an easier chart to read and he has been leading the market both up and down. And w even with yesterday's rally right over here, which again, look at the nice fall off in volume. It's it's like it even, it even knows a trend line. Again, I don't think it needs to like nail the trend line one to one but it does <laughs> funnily enough um it's it wouldn't be an issue if it didn't i just need to see that signature anyways even with that rally yesterday just kind of filling out another spike on this guy and what is this it's just a test of the 55. now this is the four hour deal to death cross right over here is this another rejection of the 55 well the way that it's shaping up so far yes it does look to be i'd really like to see one more kind of spike up into this region we are making a symmetrical triangle in this time frame as well now of course symmetrical triangle equal opportunity uh, pattern although it typically does break in the overall you know in the overall direction of the, of the trend if it broke to the upside yeah 143 is where i'd be looking at if it breaks to the downside though that would be the impetus for a break below this proverbial neckline that the red arrow is pointing towards also the 618 fibonacci retracement and you can see that 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 mr Butero had a much better like it had like a much better tar uh, much better um chart from from an algo frame right because when we when we put in this massive first rally right over here and took a stab back down to put in the first you know left shoulder ish area that was right on the 618 fibonacci retracement after that it rallied all the way back up sold the two three six came back down to the 618 and did exactly what we just saw bitcoin do yesterday where the 618 got bought again and then it sold the three three eight two that's what i was looking for that's what i was looking for all of your exponentials are still, you know, pretty bad. Um, or I mean, I mean, pretty bad. You are above the 21 on the four hour, to be fair. Uh, but four hour death cross right over here again. I mean, Mr. Buterol was death cross all the way from 600 down to here. And then it got golden cross for the first time in ages. And now it's death cross once again. So... It does have it does have weight, no no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, if if the if the neckline gets taken out right over here, one seventeen, then yes, I am looking towards sub one hundred once again. Well, significantly sub one hundred, I'll put it that way. Um, 
by the same token, this will all be taken out. This will all be no longer relevant um, if Mr. Buterall can get back above 144, 145, whatever whatever we said the measure move was, was basically up to this area right over here. Bitcoin, if he can get back above that area right there, no longer it is no longer relevant now because this is a, a potential head and shoulders uh, reversal pattern which again if you're going to be playing or uh, the, the right way to be playing patterns at least in my my experience is to only play them if you get full confirmation below the, the you know this trigger right over here um there is actually kind of like a time on this like a time limit you you don't want your right shoulder to like drool on for too long so if mr buterall were to actually break this to the upside i would probably say that this is not gonna it's not gonna work out as a as as a head and shoulders reversal pattern even though technically you'd still kind of have the right shape ish but shape but to be to be clear i i don't believe it'd be working out like that um, okay, cool. Alrighty, so covered that. Um, maybe let's go like to higher time frames and see if there's any sort of tools on this. Yeah, ten, did the 10 simple get taken out yesterday? Um, technically it did, yeah. Hey, technically it did. So fair enough. I mean, there, there, there certainly are counterpoints to the bearish scenarios that I'm, uh, uh, that, uh, that I'm leaning towards right now. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Uh, XRP right over here. XRP same sort of same same uh, same sort of shit. Uh, not getting above any sort of major critical areas. I, I need to see it above 33 and a third cent right over here. Again, you know, plenty of wicks around this area, but no takeouts of that area. In fact, this just looks like an inverted cup and handle to me right now. Um, with, you know, I mean, basically. <laughs> If maybe if we put it on like a two day, it'll make a little bit more sense. Yeah, right over here, kind of an ugly one on a two day, but as long as it's pushing off of this area right over here, it does like this does not look good. It does not. I I do not. As long as Ripple is below this guy right over here, can keep in mind the three day dildo death cross and using the twenty one as resistance. I don't want to be bullish on this thing. I uh, really do not want to. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go. Should we look at spies? No, we'll look. We'll look at them tomorrow. But basically. Basically, what we said what was happening on Friday is happening, so fair enough. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, uh, Stellar for a second. Stellar, you know, st you know, even Stellar during yesterday's nice little run for Bitcoin, not taking out that critical area right over here, the uh, the the just below eleven cent area. As long as you're below this horizontal, I mean, this is just it's just a failure to communicate. You have a massive pattern right over here, it gets bull trapped right over here, and then you get the quick swing to the other side. As soon as this guy breaks, that was another that was your second chance for second chance for love then drop back down to this area get then even give it a retest right over here third chance for love oh my god it loves you so much it's giving you all these chances and then drops back down and then it's it's just gonna be the fourth chance and last chance well it's not looking good man but uh overall at least it's not pumping and dumping like most of the most of shit in this market um okay so 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 do we want to get into some long-term analysis for mr bitcoins now I think we do. I think it's time. Alrighty, cool. Okay, so again, I do not believe that the bottom is in for Bitcoin. Why? Why do I not believe that the bottom is in for Bitcoin? Well, because this is not what a bottom typically looks like. Bottoms typically look like a massive spike in volumes, but this looks like a massive spike in volume, right? Wrong. Um, wrong. A massive spike in volume, or at least a spike in volume that I'm looking for, is something similar to what you did right over here in your parabolic cycle. Just like in 2014, your, your actual capitulation low was this spike right over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Awesome, good, great. Okay, so that's that. That's one. Doesn't need to always be like that. Again, capitulation can come two ways. It's about the causing the emotional response of desperation and, I mean, basically necessity to survive because because there's going to be a lot of people who are financially dependent upon Bitcoin because they did not make other, you know, other well they, they they don't have like other external sources of income so at some point in time they will be like forced literally forced to financially capitulate for those reasons you know to like pay for their food and shit um just like gold in 20 in in 2008 it went down with everything else you see you see the same shit um but yeah that's my point is uh is essentially you know it just needs to cause that that emotional response so one of the ways you can get this very aggressive very violent way that we saw over here in 2014 that's a per that's like the picture perfect you know uh way that i think everyone's aware of the other way though remember it's, it's an emotional response so how could you get that well how would you cause desperation going sideways at a very low price for a very 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 long time if bitcoin were to go sideways at you know three thousand dollars two thousand dollars for the next five years that would probably cause capitulation probably do it 
And yes, that would count. That would certainly count. Um, you know, maybe it's 10 years, what, however long it takes, however long it takes people to do it. But I would imagine that with Bitcoin at the current moment in time where you can't really do all that much with it. And I say this as a person who does believe in Bitcoin, but to be realistic, you can't really use it for too much right now. Uh, if, if, this went, if this thing went sideways for five years, probably going to get most people out. Probably going to get most people out. Anyways, um, okay, so, and also the, 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 the percentage reaction off this guy right over here, not good enough either. Now, out of context, you look at this and you kind of measure it up and you're like, oh, 23% off the lows. That's pretty impressive, right? Okay, well, let's go see how Bitcoin typically plays these out in its, in its history. Well, you have capitulation right over here, a very obvious scenario. That's about a 69% move in, a, in the span of really what was a few days. And we just looked at this, and that was you know a 23% a move over the span of about four to five weeks. Here's another example of capitulation right over here. This guy right over here, where Bitcoin, you know, went down to six thousand and, and bounced up literally, you know, fifty percent in the span of really what was a few days as well, and a hundred percent in the span of like a couple weeks. And this one also a hundred percent in the span of really two weeks right over here, from top to bottom. Um, so, so the percentage reaction is not good enough either. What else do we have to look at? Well, if we go bring up the, let's bring up the, let's look at the MBT signal first. Um, this, this one is endorsed by Willy Wu, the maker of the MBT signal. He is the guy who quite literally, uh, who quite literally made this so he can verify that, you know, after the upgrades of liquid and lightning, that this is actually valid. And when it comes to the MBT signal, it, when it, when it flashes a red or a green, it's flashing a potential or it's, no, it is flashing a major low it's not saying that it's like the biggest low of all time but it's a low of that phase so to speak so you have you actually have a green right over here on that six thousand that's why i that's why i pointed out as a as a as, as an example of what capitulation can look like it certainly was um you also have you also have these reds right up here calling the 20 the, calling the twenty thousand top perfectly calling this top perfectly calling you know basically the series of tops right over here which really was a bubble in and of itself in the way that i look at it the more that i think about it um going back over on over here you do see um um, a nice green right over here nice not bad and then you do see some red right over here in your parabolic cycle nice and your and your red right over here in the bull trap area you know the bubble you know the bubble after the bubble essentially which is you know how you kind of see it in, in uh at the six thousand area then you have this area right over here you know calling this low calling this high calling this low you know again this thing has a very great history of of calling these things out where are we coming in right now nowhere near nowhere near we're actually right in the, well we're not necessarily right in the middle we're certainly closer to the bottom than the top as the top is like putting at these 180 to 150 areas right over here and we're currently around like 90 but to put in perspective this this is you know this is kind of where bitcoin was if you were to make a relation between this point over here and this point over here, remember you had basically you know you basically had the same sort of thing going on parabolic cycle come down bull trap right over here come down that's kind of where we are right now. At least that's what it looks like. You see the same signature right over here. If I were to put on a nice horizontal, in fact, you can see that we're literally coming in right around that area. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Beautiful. And there's a lot of similarities between these things too, actually. In fact, you know, in 20, in 2014, or yeah, 2014, you know, it was a nice ascending triangle consolidation. And then from, you know, ta uh, taking a, taking a measure, you know, a measurement down about a 52 and a half percent move down. Not bad. What do we have over, on over here? Well, Oh my God! Another fifty-two and a half percent move. Not bad. And again, what, uh, what, 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 ugh, what was the reaction up? Well, we already looked at the one in and in, uh, in two thousand eighteen, and that was like what twenty-three percent. This is like you know twenty-four, twenty-five percent, whatever it, you know, whatever it is. Close enough is close enough. Um, so putting those things into confluence with each other, that is concerning because the MVT signal, again, is not related to price, volume, and time. It's not related to our other indicators that I look at, you know, the crystal ball type shit. It's related to the network value divided by the by, by, by the daily transaction value. So that, you know, daily transaction value, by the way. So don't put this on a fucking weekly and tell me that the low is in because everyone's been doing that. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You got to use it in, in the way that is intended to be used. Um, so yeah, we'll take this off. And then also another thing, ancient technology from traditional markets is the, uh, is, hmm, uh, volatility. 
let's uh, historic let's let's do the historical volatility rank. So ancient technology from from traditional markets where I come from as a market maker in equity options. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with me, I like to repeat that. It's probably really annoying for the people who who know that. Uh, it just sounds like I'm arrogant, perhaps. Which yeah, I understand. Like it's it's fucking annoying. But hey, I just I do want to make sure that the people who are new here kind of know where my sort of unique perspective on this on this market comes from. I used to be a market maker in equity options on New York Stock Exchange, Arca, and later Chicago board uh, above Chicago board's board of options exchange um and right over here the volatility is something that we would look at especially as options trader to denote are we at major inflection points of the market at major inflection points of the market you're going to get an extremely high reading on the volatility rank you're going to get something like this right over here on this low right over here on this high right over here and on this you know this low right over here this low right over here this uh high right over here this low right over here these ma like these major inflection points will flash an incredibly high volatility rank what is that essentially telling you i mean i can give you the oxford dictionary definition it's about essentially the mean the mean the mean returns to a standard deviation of uh, you know over a particular uh, period of time again that's not that's not too helpful what it basically tells you is high volatility essentially tells you that it's a major inflection point and perhaps a massive massive financial opportunity right over here again you'll do extremely high volatility well in our current bottom, which wasn't even the bottom, this was like literally just hanging down around the 4,000 area, Bitcoin put up like a 0.69, which is just a great number. But is that anywhere near the, the, the one that this thing oscillates all the way up to? No, it's nowhere near, in fact. Um, uh, and, and also, let's just look at in 2014, where, where was this area actually essentially? I'm curious. Yeah, it was actually all the way down around here at around two two. So no, actually not not too similar in that uh, in that in that shape. But again, you know, it's just still kind. Of, I mean, maybe it's going all the way back on over here. This was your point six nine, by the way. Uh, maybe we're just doing that right now. No, I, I don't think that that's like I don't think that that's what we're doing. Um, but, but I do want to I I do want to point out the similarities between that and just kind of build a case for why do we not have the lows in. Um, and again, remember Bitcoin. You know just not Bitcoin, but assets in general, they don't give you multiple chances to buy the low. Bitcoin has very generously already given you, you know, one, two, three, four chances to buy the low down around here, four days, sorry, four days to buy the low within about 2%. Okay, 2%, right? Well, remember, we have a couple of examples of capitulation. How does Bitcoin typically, you know, play that out? Well, this is a day dildo right over here. And that's, you know, I mean, in one day, it went up about 40%. That's literally almost double what the bounce is right now over over five to six weeks, I think it is. But really, you know, if you go down to like a two hour, most of that's going to be done in like the first fucking, you know, the first couple hours, right? Right over here. Let's uh, go back. Come on, baby. Show me the money. Show me the Bitcoins. And let's see them. There we go. Yeah, here it is. And again, the, each and every one of these is two hour dildos, right? So... You know, just just doing this out right over here in just the span of a few hours. You know, the 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 bounce was already more than Bitcoin's done in about five weeks. Remember, there's also actually an example of capitu of what capitulation can look like right over here, up front, going from twenty thousand to ten thousand in the span of what was really a week. And Bitcoin again in a two-hour dildo time frame bounced up twenty fucking more than twenty percent in two hours. More than twenty percent. More than twenty percent. More than 20%. Oh my fucking God, man. Uh, and within the span of like the next week, I think it like doubled basically all the way up to here. To, yeah, yeah, to uh, not doubled, but uh, but basically uh, like plus 50% essentially all the way to a little over 16,000, which is where I, th th this is the point right here where I became bearish on Bitcoin and, and took out took out my money or most of my money. You know, so I still obviously have some of my trading accounts, but the majority of my money I took out right around here, 16, a little bit above 16,000 on that rejection. That was the big signal to me. Um, so yeah, that is why I do not believe Bitcoin has had the low. Now, I would be willing to reconsider what I'm saying right now if three things happened. First things first, I'd want to see a higher high on the daily. It's not necessarily, it's it's important, but it's not the most important thing, but it would get you started. So that would be a good thing. You haven't done that in, in the last year. So maybe start there. Maybe start there. That would be a good one. The next one, and, and much more important, and what I'd put a shit ton of weight on, and what I'd probably even take some longs off of, is, is if Bitcoin... Um, is if Bitcoin actually opened and closed a weekly total above this Pearl 200 exponential moving average on the weekly total time frame. If it did that, that'd be very impressive. That's been holding Bitcoin back for the last, well, 
ever since we got down to this more critical area. So to me, that is a major point as well. If Bitcoin got above there, I'd probably actually take a little bit of a long. Now, the third and final and most important piece, although you probably know beforehand, is Bitcoin getting back above the 6,000 area right over here. If it can do that, if it can get back above the area that basically it spent a year consulting around and then broke to the downside from a more traditional standpoint, well, I'd have no business being short at that point in time. In fact, I would not want to be short. And I mean, I would not want to be short. I want to be long. I'd want to be having some long-term longs. So yes, again, just going off that, that's what I'd be thinking. Um, okay, so yes. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, where would I think that Bitcoin goes to if it does, you know, if, uh, assuming that, 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 that none of that happens and, uh, and just looking at this guy, again, as a very corrective move down around here, similar to what you did over here in 2014, well, I'd be looking at this and I'd be saying to myself, all right, there's a couple areas to be aware of on the downside over here. Where are these areas? Well, down around here at around 2300 to 2600, this 886 Fibonacci retracement, which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014, right over here. It is also some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in right over here. And the volume profile is going to be showing some massive thick AF nodes coming in down around here as well, actually bigger than what you did at, uh, well, bigger than what you did at 6,000 area right over here. And if we do go to the BLX index and take everything off, you can see that the 377 FIB is, or sorry, not 377 FIB, but the 377 uh, exponential is actually coming in right around there as well, 2600. Not only that, but, 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 remember, remember, remember the, the, the well, I don't know, how does that go? The eyes of December or whatever the fuck? Um, but remember, this symmetrical triangle right over here, as long as this is in play, and this is, you know, again, assuming that Bitcoin doesn't get back above 3850, as long as this is in play, though, I am looking down around here to 3250. Now, while I don't believe 3250 breaks on the next past, I think probably what's going to happen is we create another, like, descending triangle going around here. I mean, that's that's kind of the setup that we have so far. And you can make a measure move on that. So where would that be pointing around? Well, let's go see. Does that maybe look at look like something else that we've been looking at uh, recently? Um, going all the way down around here to 2300. And that would be the lower portion of that blue box territory that we were just looking at right over here once again. So, oops, let's put these guys back on. So yeah, that's, that's the next kind of area that I do have my eyes on. Um, doesn't mean that it's 100% guaranteed to be a reversal point. In fact, I will never say that. I need to see the reaction first, just like this area that we're currently in right now. You know, I'm willing, I need to see the reaction first. The reaction, in my opinion, has not been anything that resembles the bottom, to be very, very clear. Um, but I have to be going in with an open mind anytime that I see a potential bottoming area. So that is one. The one after that is this, is, is this 1850 area right over here. And then the one after that is this guy down around here, the 942 FIB actually, uh, all the way to around 1100 to 1300, which would be kind of like the former high of your prior market cycle. Um, so yeah, you know, when it comes to actual like bottoms, like market cycle bottoms, it's not because you had the right fucking line or because you had, you know, your Elliott waves told you or your fucking, you know, the RSI got too low, bro, or anything like that. No, it's not that at all. In fact, what's going on is essentially someone with extremely deep pockets just basically hits the buy button and says this is good enough and they want to get as much as possible. That is their goal. That is their perspective. So understand their perspective. And that's on. That's why all these all these silly analysts saying it's it's definitely gonna be here or definitely not gonna be here. They're it's fucking stupid. It's really silly. It's really really silly. Unless you actually know the person playing by uh, doing the button, you know if you have connections with the lizard Illuminati. Well, you probably don't know. You probably don't fucking know. So that's why as a, as a trader. Uh, as an analyst, but more importantly, as a trader, you have to go in with an open mind and be agnostic to these sorts of things. People are really showing their immaturity and really showing their lack of experience by saying extremely ignorant things like that. Anyways, um, so yeah, those those are the next potential areas. Now, if if eleven hundred if eleven hundred breaks, if, if Bitcoin actually does close like a weekly dollar below basically the high of this guy right over here, which would actually be right, right below nine hundred dollars, that would be. From a technical analysis standpoint, Bitcoin would no longer be like viable. Essentially, is 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 a way to relate it. But you can also see that uh, you know if you think if you think these vi these these uh, the, the, these nodes over here were high, uh, the the one at nine hundred is extremely high as it should be because that was kind of your breakout point from your last. Uh, your last market cycle. So again, not saying that Bitcoin has to get all the way back down there, but typically speaking, the highs of your former market cycle become the lows for your next market cycle. Um, okay, cool, 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 cool. We got all that. We got all that. I forgot to turn my 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 mic volume up for this one. I apologize about that. Um, but let's talk about some like future ideas now. Okay, so. Let's go to the matrix. Let's go into the matrix, baby. And actually, first, let's actually start off with this. So can we come up with a timing of this? Well, maybe, maybe it's 
not something that I put that much weight on, but it is interesting to look at. So you'll notice all these diagonal trend lines um, going off from the high to kind of where we are right now on these uh, different market cycles. And in 2014, that basically gets in your consolidation before the bull trap of that area. You know, and we have the same thing in 2018. We have this consolidation, it breaks out over here, it's a bull trap. Consolidation over here, breaks out right over here, bull trap right over there. And then after that, it actually comes back down and then bases off that trend line, the breakout trend line, once and then twice and puts in its low lows. Are we maybe doing the same thing in 2018? Well, so far we are still we are still actually finding this thing as support. Interestingly enough, um, and more important, I mean maybe not more importantly because I don't put too much weight on it, but uh, but as you kind of get guided down, you know perhaps we could come up with a a timing for this sort of thing. So if Bitcoin were to get to this 23, 24, or 2500 level. Uh, that could be like, you know, middle of February, it looks like. If it got down to 1850, or middle of April. If it got down to uh, 1100, 1200, whatever it is, early July. So again, just kind of uh, playing, around with, uh, playing around with ideas right over there. Uh, let's go into the matrix right over here and let's just extend this even more. And now you see all the dotted trend lines. These dotted trend lines, each and every one of them represent a, a support trend line of a market cycle in Bitcoin's history. So there's three, you have this first one right over here, support trend line in 2010, 2011 gets broken in 2012 right over here, and that becomes the highs of your 2013 and 2014 market cycle right over here. Then you create another support trend line for that market cycle right over here and right over here, that gets broken in 2015, becomes a high of your 2017, 2018 market cycle that we just played out right over here. Then we create another support trend line for that market cycle going right over here and right over here, that gets broken. <laughs> that gets broken right over here on the on the drop down below, you know, forty five hundred ish area. Does that become our governing factor going forwards over here? Perhaps, perhaps. And that's that's one of the reasons why I'm a believer in Bitcoin. Again, I don't put too much weight on this, but if you were to go all the way out to like maybe you know twenty twenty two, and I was just talking with Rocky about this, and he was saying, "Crown, crown, <laughs> Bitcoin's gonna be eighty eight thousand in twenty twenty two." And he showed me a different chart. I'm like, "Yeah, man, actually, I've been looking at that for quite some time." Um, and that would be the potential high of this area in 2022. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin's going to get there. Just like over here, it has a potential of 40, 42,000 in 2018. Well, you, you got rejected right over there and then you broke the support trend line of it. So that goes out of the wayside. Um, but yeah, it, it is interesting to look at and you can kind of come up with like a range, so to speak, which is fun. It's, it's, it's fundamentally masturbate doesn't, doesn't it's it's good it's the doctor says it's good but the real thing is better so you know as always and that's you know that's what i wanted to point out right there um but uh but overall understand that we can also come up with like a potential high for well 2019 you know tw uh, 2019 the end of 2019 that the potential high of this would be about thirteen thousand right over here and remember that's like the the high of the high uh, if you if you go out to like 2020, uh, 2020 over here, well, it gets significantly higher, right? It, it rises over time, it's my point. Um, and then perhaps, and I've been playing around with this idea of making a support trend line for this current mark cycle that we might be working off of, based off of putting in a low somewhere in like the low 2000s to high eight, uh, 1000s. Um, and, you know, maybe, you, you know, if it comes all the way down around here, then we have a support trend line going all the way out. And, you know, during those times, we can come up with a support, you know, a, a range. So again, you know, the range would be 7,000 to 90,000, essentially. Would, is that that helpful? No, it's not. It's not in 2022. But it's fun to look at. So I just wanted to, to, to briefly touch on that. Anyways, I think I'm coming to the end of this video right now. I'm going to quickly go back to the lower time frames on uh, on GDAX right over here. And uh, what am I looking at right over here? Well, again, we're, we are currently holding up the 3680-ish support. That's also the 0.5 Fib. Let's see if it does flip, uh, losing the 200 exponential on the on the uh, two-hour delta time frame. But again, I think the four hour is the one to be the best judge right now. And um, and uh, while I, I do believe that we are in a bearish pattern right over here, uh, I would like to see another run up to about 3750, 3800ish area. I'd like to be a seller right over there, and I'll be basically wanting to be a seller as long as we're below 3850, because that means that this symmetrical triangle right over here is still very much in play. Um, underlying market dynamics still coming in, still coming in hot as saying, well, not looking, you know, looking a little bit more to the bear side, especially the longs versus short. Again, I I do really want to point this out. Not point on it. It even it just rose another percent, or not another percent, but you know, not point on not one, uh, right over there. That's really fucking big. You don't see this high very often, um, so that is a big deal. 
anyways, uh, that's going to do it for today. Um, or sorry, let's actually just talk about this for a sec. Yeah, so you got this area right over here, 3850. You know, as long as you're below there, I want to be bearish. I'm looking at somewhere right around this area to, to actually put on a real position. If we do break back uh, below 3680 right over here, it's not game over. Still got this rising, rising support trend line right over here. CMEs, again, opening the, uh, will be opening up. Or sorry, they, they, they closed Friday at 3600, so be aware of that. Uh, GBC closed for Monday, most likely. I'm guessing that OTC bullshit is closed for Monday as well. Um, but uh, but hey, if this area down around here does break 3600, well, I mean, you do have supports along the way, but uh, I still believe that this symmetrical triangle right over here is still trying to play itself out. So that's going to do it for today. I'll be back on tomorrow with some more live stream action with some more video updates in the morning and perhaps some more coffee because I have had not, have not had any today. So thank you for bearing with me with my verbal fuck ups and uh, look forward to see you guys soon. Take care and a pleasure to speak with you.